Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we have another effect video and this video has some very cool effects and in my opinion maybe even some of the best effects I've ever made in the series. But if you guys do go on to learn from or enjoy this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. But let's get into the first effect. Okay, so the first effect we're going to be going over in this video is a UI constellation system where we have these moving rods that connect to each other and look like constellations for your UI. And also shout out the Discord user on screen for allowing me to present this in this video. And the best part about it is this module will be the first link in the description so you can go pick it up it'll be in a model and you don't have to type a single thing and it is already all here for you guys now it's pretty basic there's quite a bit of settings you can have here like the point amount the connection range and all that other kind of stuff and i don't want to get too deep into it it just basically has a pool system a rod pool system and a point pool system so it's kind of more optimized because we are reusing uh the rods instead of constantly destroying them so we're kind of reusing them and it's just a matter of moving them up and down and all that fun stuff we're using uh run service that pre-render but you guys can look at that yourself but how we actually use this is we can put a local script here and then get our ui constellations module and then all we have to do is you can say UI constellations and there is start and stop. So start, we just have to put in a screen UI. So you can put in a screen UI here and then you can just say, get the local player and also player GUI. I probably didn't have to put this in starter player scripts, but well, we're, we're already typing this out, so it is what it is, but player GUI, screen GUI, and we can toss in a screen GUI there. So now if you guys head into your game, you can see as we move our mouse, we have these cool dots that are kind of connected to each other or connected to the mouse cursor. And as we move it around, you can see it is quite cool now if we leave it still you can see that the dots are moving up and down and it is just a cool effect now as i said earlier there's a few settings we can mess around with so points amount we could double the amount of points and as you can see here there's more points and then there's also the settings like the connection range so you could double this or maybe even triple it maybe 250 and then you will see that there are more connections as you can see so it connects uh the cursor to more dots around it and it's just a pretty cool effect you could maybe use this in some type of game or maybe a play screen but it is very cool and also if you want to stop them so let's say after three seconds we want them to stop all you would have to say as i said earlier is ui constellations dot stop and then after three seconds the effect stops and it's all good to go all right so for the second effect someone in my discord wanted me to make a ui sparkle kind of system like you would see on mythical pets in a pet simulator x inventory system so that is going to be the next effect here i have a ui sparkle module that i need to type in there so to get all that going and then also to show that it can be ran on lots of frames here i have a screen ui with a whole bunch of frames that will act as like an inventory system and our sparkles can play on that so let's get to coding this module
this is our UI Sparkle module done. Uh, you could tell from the time lapse that I kind of forgot to do some stuff. Like down here, I was uh, already typing the start function when I forgot to type the update Sparkles function. But if you guys want the full thing, just to make sure you guys didn't get lost or confused or missed out on anything, this is the full script. And then the basic rundown of this entire thing is here we have a default configuration with a texture lifetime rate. You guys can copy these settings if you want, but this is what it will default to if you don't send in a new one. So get sparkle. It basically just uh, checks if we have a sparkle in our sparkle pool, which is used for optimizing and, you know, not getting rid of sparkles. Uh, constantly getting rid of them and uh, making new ones if we don't need to and so if uh, there is one then we're gonna uh, set the visibility to true and then but if there isn't a sparkle then we're just gonna make a new one that's hard to get out but <laughs> that's what I was trying to get across clean up sparkle just gets rid of it and the sparkle pool and all that good stuff create sparkle it gets a new sparkle as I said earlier and then sets the image the size and then a rotation if we need it and then it finds uh, a point in the UI so parent UI dot absolute size it finds a X and Y position in that and it sets it to that and then it's just as simple as tweening it so tweening in it tweens it to its max size and then tweens out it goes back to its minimum size which as we set up here is zero on all axes so that is just about it update sparkles you know it does all the good stuff uh, with the movement and uh, when it should go out and all that stuff uh, start is setting the configuration table and then connecting to pre-render so that is just about it so to actually make this work with the frames as i said earlier i have a local script that loops through all of the frames and calls ui sparkle dot start for all of them and so if we play the game you will see that here are our sparkles playing. They're tweening in and out, and it's very smooth with the amount of frames we have. So if you imagine all of these are pet frames, it's running very smooth, and it is very, very cool. Okay guys, so for the third effect in this video, I'm going to make a 3D to 2D kind of effect. So in this video, I will give the example of collecting gold and the gold going up to an image and basically making it look like it's going from 3D to 2D. And so don't worry, because this is a little bit more complex in advance, so I will explain it at the end. But as you can see here, I have a screen UI with a gold icon and also a UI effect 3D module. Uh, so I'm going to get the module done and then I'll get some gold bars in here and set up to, uh, the way to collect them. So let's get into the module. Alright guys, so this is our script done. As usual, I want to include as many things you can configure as possible. So here we have move duration, shrink duration, fade duration, and mid size scale. And so we can skip all the boring stuff and come on down here to the run service connection. And here in this whole 
list of variables here we are finding the center point of the ui element in screen space so absolute position here's our absolute size in screen x screen y and then we convert that screen point into a a 3d ray and then we set a uh, target position 15 studs along the ray so this is our distance here and we multiply that there so to make this a little bit easier i have these phases so it could either be in move or shrink fade so when it's in the move phase it animates the parts position and size toward the ui point and then when it's complete as you can see here it switches the phase to shrink fade and then shrink fade it shrinks the part down to nothing our goal size which is uh where is it at vector dot zero and then it fades its transparency to one and it uh, fades all that out looks nice and then it disconnects everything and destroys it so it's a little bit uh, more complex on the outside but it's not as bad when you actually look at the code so now let's spawn in some gold and configure that all right guys so here is our gold bars and in every gold bar if we look it has a tag of gold tag and then also here i have a local script this is how we collect the gold now if you want a basic rundown uh every heartbeat we are looping through collection service and getting every gold part that has the tag gold tag and then basically it's just a matter of distance checking it uh, and if the distance is smaller than the pickup radius which is six then we collect it in a table and then play the effect and send in our gold object so if we head into our game and then we walk up to our gold let me turn my volume off real quick all right and then we get close to the gold and then as you can see a cool little effect plays and the gold goes to our image so it is very very cool and so even if we moved our image around so it could literally be anywhere so see if it's over there and we do it again then you see that the gold still goes to that gold bar no matter where that image is at very very cool okay guys so for the last effect for this video i am going to show you guys how to make an outline screen glow which basically makes a glow around your entire screen and you would usually see this in maybe a simulator i know that's where i've seen it i've seen in simulators where if you craft a gold pet uh there is that glow effect around the screen that's golden and it just uh, shows that you successfully made a gold pet so that's how we're gonna be doing that and so in my starter GUI I have a screen GUI with a whole bunch of images so if I select all of them and oh I forgot transparency uh, image transparency set to one or set that to zero this is what the glow looks like and so if you want the ID for this uh, it is this on screen uh, so you guys can see that clearly and also to actually make this work as you can see I have no UI aspect ratio constraints but my images are scaled uh, for the size and position uh, I don't have any anchor points set except for my left and right ones so my left one it is 0 0 0.5 and my right one it is 1 0 0.5 and then also another thing you should change is in the screen gui i believe um let's see where was that at is it in here uh it might be screen incense in wait hold on okay so it is screen insets I, I know i was saying that wrong i was <laughs> trying to say a whole a uh, whole nother thing but for your screen insets you should change core ui safe insets to none so then uh it'll be across the entire screen and is ignore gui inset enable okay yep ignore gui inset 
is enabled as well so i believe that is all we need for this to work and look good on all devices so now it's a very short module script we can begin with screen glow Alright guys, so this is our basic module done. Instead of returning a table, we are just returning the single function here, and we can send in a color of the glow, how long it takes for it to tween in, and also how long it is on the screen for. And basically, it's just a matter of looping through all of the images and just making sure that they're all there, and also tweening them so they come in and then they tween out. So it's very, very simple. And then obviously I'm just going to set the transparency of these to one so we don't see them. And then to make this work, insert a local script, get a screen glow, and then I'm gonna wait a few seconds, maybe like three, cause three is a pretty good number. And then screen glow, we can send in a color three value. So color three dot from RGB, I'll do a blue color and then 0 0.4 and six. So now we can, head into our game after three seconds you will see that just like that we have a glow around our screen and then it disappears just like that so you guys might have noticed that when your humanoid gets damaged uh, it, it has that little effect around it too so that could be used for something but again if we used the gold scenario like earlier this is more of an orange, but you guys get the point. Then you can have that too. Every color, it looks really nice. So there you guys go. But yeah, guys, that was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.